Okay, you too. My name is Trey. Welcome to What Got I Change. And today we're going to be talking about Chelsea Handler getting into a little bit of a spat. Now, I want to make I want to make this clear. This video is really not about Chelsea Handler. I know she's pushing an agenda. I don't really care for her. You know, it's not like I'm not really that deep into her. But I do want to talk about this particular subject because I do think it's important. So let's go ahead and get that pulled up, DJ. Of course not, DJ. You can have that ready to go. It's all cool, though. It's all good. All right, let's watch it. Oh, <laughs> is she talking about me? You are set an example for young women, and you're making them think that this is the way. And that's deeply irresponsible, by the way, and a little evil. Pardon me. I'm just cracking open my morning bottle of champagne. <laughs> because there's going to be a lot of young women that look up to you and they follow that path and they're going to be awfully angry at you when they follow your advice and they're sitting at 48 with their bottle of wine at 7 o'clock in the morning lonely while their friends are sitting around with their beautiful families glowing with happiness and not, you know, red-faced and puffy from too much wine that morning. Listen up, Jedediah. I don't know if that's your real name or your sister wife name, but... Also, understand that Chelsea Handler is known for um, having... A ton of abortions. She's happy about having an abortion. So when she says she's childless, she's not talking about a life of celibacy. She's not talking about that. She's talking about a life of doing whatever I want with no repercussions, right? Having a baby and all that stuff is a beautiful gift. But she acts like having a kid and all that is just an awful thing. So she has kids, then she gets abortions, and then she's like, oh, yeah, you know, life is grand on this side. She's one of the most selfish people you'll probably ever hear about. Obviously, like I said, there's an agenda. Maybe she's being paid behind the scenes. So I don't know. But my main point is, this is not somebody that I would think any woman would want to look up to. Somebody who goes out recklessly, has kids just to take their life. There's something wrong with that, guys. I have some downtime between my back-to-back -back champagne brunches this morning. According to Paul Dolan, who is a professor of behavioral science at the London School of Economics, which is a pretty good school, women who are single with no children are happiest. Dolan says that recent data shows that long-established traditional symbols of success, like marriage and motherhood, do not necessarily correlate with happiness levels. And if you don't believe me, just ask this happily married mom of four how things are working out for her. I really thought those two were going to make it. I always heard that the couple who gives a town diarrhea together stays together. But apparently, that's a no, no, no. Oh, and don't worry, Jedediah, this wine won't make me red or puffy. Since I don't have kids to pay for, I have extra money and I bought a hyperbaric chamber. So it's great for the skin, my circulation, so I can just drink and do as many drugs as I want and then I come back in here and flip it and reverse it. <laughs> Peace be unto you. Like I said, she obviously sounds like a joke, right? And that's how I take her. A joke. But the concept, and man, I don't know how many times we have to go over this, of the concept of trying to break up the family. But here we are again, having this conversation. So let's talk about it. Sorry, I'm looking at the background. So we're talking about women saying they're um, happier, right? And she goes on to talk about this Dolan research, right? So I went ahead and looked into it, obviously, because y'all know how I am. Nosy as can be. You say something in the video, I got to at least take a look. So I went and read through this whole thing. And here's the part that she mentions. Um... Mr. Dolan said in the latest data demonstrated that long established traditional symbols of success do not necessarily correlate with happiness levels. First of all, I want to mention this. If you go through this whole study and read through this whole thing, he does not base that off of anything like um, something substantial. He based that off of overall happiness, not happiness in a marriage, but just overall happiness in general. And then even when you go into his study, there is a, he has this six, six levels, and I'll show you guys here in a second, but there's six levels of happiness. And there's only a 0.2 differential between being happy and in his own words, fucking happy. And he bases this all off of, because when they were doing the survey, that people answered differently when their spouse was in the room and when their spouse was not in the room. It, it, it's a, it was an awful study based off of really nothing. But um, let's go to a, a study that was done as, around the exact same time as this one. Okay. Are, hap are married people still happy? Are, are married people still happier? You can see this up here. You can go to this link if you want to follow um, and check it out for yourself. But we'll just, you know, keep it here. Look at the graphics. Make it easy and simple here. Okay. So they went and asked, you know, these people how they are feeling with their marriage and their things. And down here you can see no kids, you can see parent, okay? So here's never married. This is happiness now. The bottom. Separate divorce. Still very down at the bottom. And here is married and married with 
uh, kids. Married with no kids, married with kids. So you can see that's pretty high. And then they went on to ask just women. Never married, separate and divorced. Oh, look at that. Married, no kids, a little happier. Married with kids, happy. That's, that's weird. Still higher than people who say never married, no kids at all. Right? All right, so we go with the unhappiness. For people who say we base it off who are people who are dealing with unhappiness. You got here, 6 to 7%. People who are married saying they are, this is, their unhappiness is the lowest. Then you have people separate and divorced, happiness. And then you have people who are never married. Right? So people who are married have the lowest unhappiness. The separate and divorce, obviously, the higher. Uh, same thing again. Females, lowest married. Kids, about the same. The, really, the differential between kids and no kids are about the same. Uh, separated, divorced, never married. And the thing about the whole kids thing uh, is because I want to explain something that people may not understand when you have a child, right? Having a kid is not necessarily a boost in happiness, right? Even though y'all can still see that people with the kids are married are still way higher than the people who didn't have it but at the same time it's like your kids aren't necessarily supposed to bring you happiness it's a sacrifice and a responsibility that comes to kids there's a little bit more um that comes with that you know you got to work harder you know you got to provide money you know you can't think for yourself anymore so obviously that doesn't mean your happiness is going to be through the roof but to say that people who don't have kids and who are unmarried are far happier and women are far happier there's nothing that says that in fact since the 70s it shows that all the way up until this point women have gotten unhappier and unhappier and unhappier and unhappier as they become more and more and more unmarried. Now, why is that guys? Why is that? Because listen, being married is a sacrifice. You do have to live a life that's a lot different than if you want to live single, but anybody who's been single for a long time can tell you that being single and having nobody to come home to nobody to have conversation with nobody you can confide at least the vast majority of yourself into somebody you can become with and live life through experience things. You know, when I was growing up, not like about five, six years ago, I met a man who was my mentor and I noticed every time he spoke, even though him and his wife went through struggles and they went through hard times and yes, his wife can be difficult and sometimes he can be difficult. But every time he spoke, majority of the time he said, you know, we, 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 my wife and I, we, 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 meaning every time he mentioned anything, it's like, oh yeah, my wife and I, we were at this place the other day and it was, or, oh yeah, we went on this trip and it was, uh, oh, me and my wife and we were just, it's beautiful. And I always found that beautiful because every time he mentioned himself, he mentioned his wife. It's the same thing I normally do. Me and my wife live different lives. I have a completely different life than she does because I've grew up differently and I have different skills and she has different skills than I have. So it's not like we're just together all the time and we even think the same majority of the time. But at the same time, a lot of times you guys may hear me say, you know, I was with my wife and me and my wife and my wife because because I do see us as one same last name, everything. Right. And it does make life better to know that there's somebody there for you, somebody that I know will always pick up the phone, somebody I can go through the hardships through. Am I always happy with my wife? Of course not. She always happy with me. Of course not. I didn't get married to her to just live this life of pure happiness. I married my wife to build a family. be a husband and be a father. That was my main objective in the beginning. It's my objective. Now I'll protect my wife. I'll protect my kids. That was always my objective. I never got married to my wife and be like, man, I just want this life of happiness. I just want this life to be full and grand and everything's going to be sparkles and rainbows. Everybody knows that's not how marriage goes, but it's so much more beautiful to go through life with somebody. Now saying all that, I do want to say this. There are people who live their life in celibacy there are people who will never get married and they can still live a rich fulfilling life and most of those people you know devote their life to god right as people in marriage do but there's people who decide not to have marriage and be celibate meaning no sexual interaction no porn none of that and they live their life without any kids they live their life without a spouse and they just give their life to god and devote their life to only that and it's obviously a beautiful life you know you got your priests monks nuns and such that is obviously you can have the same exact happiness, right? You can still have a great happiness with that life. But to say that living now, the, the argument to being single is not that they're not saying devote your life to God. They're saying be single, don't have kids so you can have more money to spend on yourself. But it's pretty much what it comes down to. Don't make any sacrifice. Just live for yourself. That is the very dangerous way to live. You need to be challenging yourself. You need to be sacrificing yourself for something in this world. 
Just just say I want to be single and not have, be unmarried just because I want to just sit around, have sex whenever I want to, but not, you know, build a family or anything. But also just want to have money too. I can just sit and uh, dabble in my riches and focus on my career and just be a money man or be a money woman. That's a dangerous way to live. And that's what people start getting into drugs, alcohol, sex, and all this stuff to fill a void because there's nothing there. Living for yourself, guys, is going to get boring and it's not going to be fulfilling. There will always be a void that can only be filled honestly with God. And then there's another void that can also be filled with God and a spouse, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm wrong. Do you like being single and unmarried at 48 years old? Y'all let me know. I'll see y'all guys later. Goodbye.